Well, hello guys. Here we are again on another installment of the AM transmitter based on uh, Bob Howell's Pine Boyd project. And what we're going to discuss this time is the power supply. Now, as you can see, our transformer is rated for 250 volts at 130 milliamps. And we're using the 6x5 rectifier tube. So you can see that our secondary high voltage goes to pin 5, which is the plate, and to pin 3, which is the other plate. Uh, filament will go on pins 2 and pin 7. And we'll get our 8 um, output voltage on pin 8, which will go through these filter capacitors and two 1k ohm resistors and we'll come out the other side with our B plus now as you can see uh, there's only one B plus terminal and even though this is 250 volts by the time you go through the tube and drop and then through filter and rectification it's not like solid state uh, you know 250 volt transformer but we're going to get less than 200 volts out on the B plus because of the two rectification. Now the thing was on this, you know, how well does this 6x5 hold up? But we got to also look at this. We're not pulling a lot of current through this tube. So in reality, this tube will probably hold up very well um, you know we can change to go to a different type of tubes uh, the only thing about this circuit we don't have a 5 volt AC to run the tube with a cathode and that's why they use the 6x series so all in all yeah this tube should be fine you shouldn't have no problem with thermal melt helm in it <laughs> But again, we're going to be stuck with less than 200 volts on the B+, which is good for the preamp. But we really need more voltage on the transmitter section. And uh, with about, I'm say this is going to run somewhere around 180 to 190 volts of DC coming out on the B+. When it would be good to see about 300 volts on the plate of the final, that would give us roughly about 5 watts output. With uh, less than 200, we're probably looking at less than 2 watts output. So, you know, it's a situation where you can go extreme QRP or just uh, around 5 watts, which you know, in this case, uh, the more power out, the better um, signal you can produce if you got a good antenna. So, what we're going to do is look at the power supply, and uh, we're going to check the voltages and see exactly just what we're getting. So, here you can see our power supply is built up on this red board, and I got the uh, 6x5 just laying here on the bench, and uh, it's built exactly the way the schematic shows so uh, we're going to take a look at it you can see our three capacitors and our two resistors and uh, we're going to go ahead and turn this on and we're going to come up here and we're going to look at our voltmeter I'm on the uh, 500 volt scale and we are reaching just about 190 volts using the tube rectification again that is good voltage to feed the preamp with the microphone but it's a little low for the uh, 
final output. But it does, you know, it is what it is on this. It, it's good and stable. It should be pretty clean with three filter capacitors. So, uh, you know, it's not, not too bad at all. Alrighty, so this is the solid state version. As you can see, the center tap on the secondary is not used. And our two secondary high voltage wires goes to this ridge rectifier. And then, you know, we come from negative to ground, well, the capacitors and resistor is grounded too. But out the uh, positive, the B+, plus, it comes in and goes into this first capacitor and there's a dropping resistor, 33K ohm dropping resistor. So we pick up our high voltage at this point here. Go through this dropping resistor, there's another 20 microfarad capacitor and a 33K breeder resistor. And then we come out with our lower high voltage. So this is B plus to the preamp, and then this is B plus for the transmitter. So we saw our maximum voltage on the B plus from the tube with about 190 volts works okay for the transmitter works real good for the preamp we don't need to feed the preamp as much voltage as we would the transmitter 150 volts would be fine for the preamp anything else is just going to be uh, excess and uh, bled off in heat so let's take a look at the uh, solid state on the breadboard and see exactly what we have Okay, you can see our two high voltage leads come to either side of the bridge rectifier. There's ground on this side and B plus on this side. Follows through, goes through the first capacitor. This is where we pick up our high voltage at. Goes through a 33k ohm resistor to this point. And that's our other 20 microfarad, 450 volt cap with a 33k bleed resistor going to ground. So let's take a look at that. What we're going to do, we're going to look here and here. This is the high voltage, this is the lower voltage. We're still on the 500 volt scale. We'll go to the B plus. And there's about 390 volts to feed our final width. And then on the, uh, the lower voltage, for our preamp we're at a good hundred volts okay with that what you need to remember also is that we have no load on the outputs so this uh, 390 volts is going to drop down once it's you know in circuit and all the other components are attached and the thing is operating it's probably going to drop down to about 350 volts also on the tube that 190 volts is going to drop down quite a bit also so we're going to get even less voltage going to our final so i think this you know 100 to 150 volts on the preamp is is just fine and we got a good strong um voltage for our plate of our transmitter and honestly I think this is the way to go with this build now I know everybody loves tubes um, but for efficiency to get what we really want out of this transmitter I think solid state is the uh, the way to go you can build yours the way you want to you know that's the good thing about this project um, you can do it how you want to uh, you don't have to completely follow along with the way someone else is doing it I know the first ones that uh, Bob Hall and them built were using the uh, tube rectification but I think the uh, solid state's the way to go even on uh, BobHall.com uh, website 
the first schematic you get to is the solid state version. I think they just found out that it, it runs better at a uh, higher voltage. Now a good thing about this, uh, you can tailor this as you want it by changing out a 33K to a 27K. Let me show you the difference it made on feeding the uh, preamp. So this is our V plus and then to our preamp. See we went up to about hundred and uh, like about a hundred and ten volts. So by changing out these two resistors, you know we had thirty three K's in there. These are 43k and if we go back and look at our voltmeter again and we check the voltage on the uh, low voltage supply we see we're up about 175 volts so uh, probably somewhere around 38k would get us down to about 150 and you know that's the, the good thing about building the solid state supplies that we can change components around and get the desired voltage we need for our secondary high voltage to feed our preamp just by changing out these two resistors so as you can see just by doing this simple test we have determined what each power supply was going to produce and we can clearly see that the solid state version is the way to go uh, more power to the final more wattage out um, you know and plus keeping the preamp at a lower voltage so it'll run correctly now there is a uh, resistor in line going to the preamp that's going to drop the voltage even more but the solid state version I think is going to be the best way to go So on the chassis, I've been giving it quite a bit of thought. Uh, you know, I said something about putting the transform over here and then the uh, final tube in front of it. And I've completely changed that thought process on this. I think we should have our transformer over here. Um, you know, we only got 6 volts and 250 volts in the center tap. We're probably going to want to install a 12 volt transformer so we can sit right here and the reason for that is for our relay. This way we don't have to run a 110 volt relay. You know, this keeps uh, the voltage lower going to the, uh, the relay circuit. I think it'll just be a, a little bit better to do it that way. This also put our tank coil over here on this side our load and tune capacitor and we'll put our final tube back here in the back and the oscillator tube just in front of it and then that gives us the middle to put our crystals and uh, mic preamp and stuff I think that'll be the easiest way to go on this to keep everything separated and Joint now, uh, somebody in the comments mentioned about enclosing the preamp. Well, that's, that's a good idea, but such low wattage, and I don't think that'll be that much problem. Uh, if you remember, this thing was built on pine board to start with, so everything is open and exposed anyway. Uh, all the circuit, a lot of the RF stuff will be kept below the chassis, while the rest of it will be above the chassis. So Again, you know, that was a pretty good idea doing that, but uh, a little 12AX7 does produce a little bit of heat, and, uh, you know, we don't want to build an oven. <laughs> we just want to uh, keep things spaced out. So, yeah, power transformer over on this side, our transmitter on this side, and our preamp circuit up here near the front. Now, Another reason for that is, we look at the back of this, 
we already got two holes for SO239s. So if we decide to put TR switching in here, we come and uh, we already got a hole over here for fuse holder or power cord with a couple of holes here. Now, we might can put the load uh, tuning capacitor up here in the original spot where this is already drilled out for a tuning capacitor to go ahead of tank coil and then a load capacitor be underneath at the bottom wheel look at that we might just drop this to the bottom too we'll see how it goes as we're building in the, and we think more about on how we want to do that okay I went ahead and drilled our mounting holes for the transformer and if you see I took the paint off where the uh, transformer is going to make contact to the chassis on both sides of the chassis this way that the transformer can get a good ground also drilled the holes for the uh, primary and secondary wiring and installed grommets to keep anything from getting shorted out so all we got to do now is just take our transformer put it in and the wire through the holes and bolt it down okay guys transformer was mounted got a power indicator lamp mounted uh, off on switches mounted and yes I did slip with the uh, deburring tool and hit the front face it happens As you can see right there there's just a little scrape mark there so I gotta go see if I can find my paint to touch that up and uh, you know there'll be other places around the cabin that's gonna have to be touched up that's part of the process of building these things you know you're gonna make some mistakes uh, got the power cord and fuse installed just got the power cord wired to the back of the uh, transmitter We can look under the bottom here. See our wiring from our transformer and our power cord. And I laid a terminal strip down here. And uh, I'm in the process, I just built the full way bridge rectifier. And this is how I normally do it on terminal strips. You got your ground. AC in here, AC in here, and then your output. And that'll be mounted in here. And then uh, we'll have plenty of terminal strips for everything to uh, connect to in there. Okay, guys, power supply is completely done. Um, all wired in. I've got the orange meter on the uh, preamp supply and the blue meter will be monitoring the B plus for the transmitter. Let me zoom on in a little bit. Let's see if I can get that glare off. Yeah I think y'all can see both meters now. We're going to turn the supply on and I'm going to start cranking the very yak up. I'll turn this light off. You can see the uh, jewel is just starting to light up. Looking good, minimum current draw. I 
I'm going to ask the full 120 volts. You can see if we're at 393 on our B, and about 186 for our preamp circuit. And remember, again, you know, once this is under a load, these voltages will fall. So, yeah, that's looking real good. No problems whatsoever. You can see a little jewel is nice and bright. So I'll shut this down and uh, yeah, and you can see the uh, the pinch is a mess. <laughs> you know, that's stuff laying everywhere. But uh, that's what happens when you're building stuff. And you get kind of a mess. So just show you a little bit on the build. You can see our pilot lamp is mounted above the uh, bottom of the chassis. And we got uh, a little standoff here, a terminal lug for the ground, and then our wire for our six bolt on the filament that comes up through here. Okay, I'm looking bottom side. You see, I landed three terminal strips here. And there's one terminal strip on the back. The terminal strip on the back takes care of the AC input, goes to our fuse, goes back down, comes through these black wires running around the rail, up to our switch, back into our other side of the transformer. You can see our um, green leads for ground. It's connected down here. Here's our two 33K resistors. This is the high voltage. It comes off of this bridge rectifier that we made over here, and it's just jumped over. Our center tap is right here. We don't have to use the center tap, so I just tacked it right here. Maybe something in the future we might need it for. And uh, so this is our high voltage out. That'll feed the plates of the transmitter. And uh, this is our low voltage for our preamp in between the two resistors. And then we'll pick up our filament here on this terminal next to the bottom. See if I can get in there a little closer. Now you can see it. High voltage, low voltage filament. And we have our two capacitors in here and grounded on this end. So that's pretty much all of this to it to the power supply. It ain't nothing, you know, real hard to do. Um, you just follow along the diagram and um, build it exactly like it shows and uh, there you have it see our green wire is running from the filament line coming up through here and going through this grommet to our lamp that's top side well guys that completes the main power supply build and you can see that was very simple straightforward it's just uh, you know mostly just getting Everything in there where you think you need it, get the layout right, and then just start uh, connecting everything up. Pretty simple. Now, I will be adding a 12-volt supply into this. I uh, looked around the shop, and I didn't quite find a transformer like I really wanted. Um, I've got some big ones, but... Uh, no need to put no 6 amp 12 volt power supply in this we only need you know half to 700 milliamps supply to run the uh, TR relay uh, and again you know I don't really want to go with 110 volt which we could and uh, then you don't even have to add a pi another power supply but I like to have the uh, ability to have 12 volts in this system so uh, I'm going to line and order up probably a Hammond uh, 12 volt transformer. I did have one small one that uh, I was going to use, which is this one right here, but the uh, primary is open on it. So it's out and you know, just mount it right down inside here and then uh, build the rectifier circuit for it through. No big deal. But anyway, you know, this was real simple to do. Nothing, nothing hard about it at all. I start digging around my junk box 
Now someone in the uh, comment of the other video said paid way too much for these parts. Yeah, that is probably true. Uh, you can go online and order all these parts. Probably half of the $160 I spent. But you got memory, you know, you're not going to get everything from one place. So you're going to have to uh, pay shipping. You got to add all the shipping in for all the parts that you uh, you order to build this with. And again, you know, your junk boxes are probably full of, uh, of parts. That's like the um, 365 Pico Farad um, variable air capacitor. Well, after looking around, I probably have a dozen or so of them already that came out of various pieces of equipment. This one here actually came out of a uh, old CB amplifier. In fact, I think it was the same cabinet that this was made in. So, you know, check your uh, your junk boxes. The lamp, and here's, I got several of these. Um, the jewels in another case put up so they don't get broken. So, you know, my uh, junk bins are full of goodies. Um, here is a crystal um, and with a selector it's a four position selector holds four crystals and it's the big size crystals this actually came out of an old tube type CB that I took apart and repurposed the cabinet for something else so you know there's two sockets if uh, we decided to make this a four band unit you know 40 uh, or we say a three band 40 80 and 160 and then we got another tap on the switch to go with uh, VFO or auxiliary input whatever we decide to do with it but this would work right in there the only thing with this is that I want to be able to use one switch to control the crystal selection and the band tap or the coil which uh, this switch here would not do that because you don't have nothing sticking out the back. Now I could tear this down, go out in the shop on the milling machine, get a piece of uh, brass or bronze and make a new insert for this that's even longer and then put it back together. So, you know, it just depends on what you like to do. Um, it's real easy, you know, to come up with stuff. I got lots and lots of old um, ceramic style wafer switches and uh, I'm not going to use bake light switches in this. It'll all be ceramic. So, you know, this way when you change frequency or change the crystal, you're automatically changing the tap on the final amplifier. And uh, I've got some that's got the long shafts out the back. So, you know, the possibilities on this is endless. And that's the good thing about home brewing something like this. You know, Bob Howe did a great job on designing this prime pine board project. And you know, and the, and the good thing about it is, you can take that design and just keep adding and building to it, and uh, go further and further into it. I do have another old amplifier that was made from the same company. Uh, which was DNA and it's actually twice as wide as this and I'm thinking you know that would be a a great box to build a transmitter and receiver combination and make a transceiver out of so that's something we might look at into the future but we're gonna get this one finished up first <laughs> it's just uh, you know like I say the possibilities are endless on how far you want to go already got some uh, SO239s, just need to clean them up, mount them right back in the uh, original holes. This way we have one for the antenna and one for a receiver, and we'll put a uh, circuit in it, TR switch to switch between the two. And uh, that way you can mute the receiver when you key the transmitter. Anyway, uh, over on my website at gocarters.com, uh, the electronic universe we scroll down to uh, homebrew and tech form I've already started a thread 
over here on this and uh, with links to uh, everything and links to parts and here I'm gonna start adding pictures and diagrams and so forth on uh, the progress of this not only do I want to you know record this I want to document it on my website also and uh, you know if you want to go over and discuss feel free the links will be down below if you like to go check that out and uh, you know comment and make suggestions and stuff it's a lot easier to do some of that on the in the form as it is on YouTube because uh, YouTube you can't really upload um, pictures of your designs so how you, you know you decided to do it so if y'all like to join me over there like I say the link is down below the website's free no charge you can sign up go in and participate if you like all right so that's it on this one guys uh, I think the next um, episode will start on the mic preamp circuit and uh, I kind of got to make my mind up now exactly on how I'm going to do the transmitter because we got this plate inside there we go now we got a better shot up we got this plate inside that's going to cover up these holes and I'm thinking about putting the uh, output tube here and then the uh, oscillator tube maybe up another hole so if I do that I'll put this plate back in and we'll cut out those holes so that uh, we'll build them out those two tubes and then we'll get this plate situated and bolted down we'll have to remove some paint underneath so that this will ground real good and uh, we'll get this in place like it's supposed to and we're probably going to put the uh, preamp it you know up in this area here and with our controls out the front then that should give us enough room over here to get our um, band core and get that situated so that's where we are now and uh, we'll get back on to it like I say while I'm off I wanted to get this started get it uh, working out and uh, we'll go from there because I think it's a fun project and you know it's always the best results when you finished and you get to use it and uh, that's so satisfying now someone in the comments asked was how big is the platform we're building on and uh, just to show you the size of what this case is so you can get a better understanding of it it is exactly 1200 it is exactly uh, 12 inches and 1 8 wide the front panel is uh, seven and a quarter inches tall. The depth of the chassis is about ten and an eighth, and then the uh, platform, for it goes from the bottom, is about two and a quarter inches. So that gives you an idea just. Uh, how big this box is uh, so you know no problems with that if you wanted to you could build this in a much smaller box and make the power supply remote put it in its own little box and then just plug the power supply into the back of it that gives you a little bit more room in a smaller box thanks for watching leave your comments down below don't get to check on the show more tab and we'll see you in the next video bye now